So um, Aden is the temporary capital of, uh, of uh, Yemen, uh, where the internationally recognized government should be located. But there are very few government officials in Aden at the moment. I think one of the things that, that really stands out is how neglected this international capital actually is. So this was the first time that I had been to Aden since the Saudi intervention in March of 2015. And I was shocked by the level of devastation, but also the lack of reconstruction two and a half years after the Houthis had been pushed out. But that ground fighting again was, was vicious. One of the things that also happened was that the coalition heavily relied on airstrikes. Oftentimes a Houthi sniper would be in a hotel or a, or a building and it'd be one sniper and then the building would be destroyed by an airstrike. So what you see is widespread destruction of infrastructure and, and, and buildings in Aden. So um, from a social political perspective, this is uh, something that is pervasive in Aden from whatever group that you that you are aligned with and the, the city is a divided city politically. Um, there's a desire to return to normality. Right? There's a desire to have a more governance, uh, more services, and, and particularly reconstruction. So really a desire for, for, for reconstruction in the city and for more effective government presence. So the national level peace negotiations have been frozen for some time. We have thought um, from the beginning that the structure of the UN negotiations are, are deeply uh, problematic um, and need to be um, reconsidered. Um, for two main reasons. Uh, one is that um, at some level, um, the security interests and demands of, of, the, of the regional actors uh, must be taken into, into account because uh, this is a regionalized civil war. Uh, Saudi Arabia is very strongly backing the uh, internationally recognized government side of the equation with, with the UAE. So the idea that the Houthis and the internationally recognized government are the two actors that can bring peace to Yemen or to solve um, the now um, more complicated Yemeni problems that led to the civil war in the first place is, is unreasonable and unrealistic. Um, so the Houthis do not represent all the forces in the north and the internationally recognized government um, cannot by any stretch of the imagination represent the other forces that are anti-Houthi. Uh, the internationally recognized government has very little presence on the ground and that was very evident in this trip to the south. Just as, as Yemen is, is no longer one country in terms of governance or security structures, it is fragmented along historical divides. Same thing with the humanitarian situation. I mean, in some sense, the um, humanitarian disaster in Yemen, I mean, it, it, it does affect everyone, um, but it affects different regions differently to some extent. Certainly internationally there's quite a bit of focus on um, the new um, Saudi humanitarian plan for Yemen. They have promised to fund part of the UN humanitarian effort and then also have some of their own uh, plans for improving ports. But the focus of most Adenese that I spoke with and, and, all, and particularly um, the business community was uh, really the need to revive the economy. The idea that you know humanitarian aid is not what is needed. It's, it's the jobs in Saudi Arabia that are needed. It's the remittances that are needed. It's, it's getting the economy back on track uh, inside of Aden through uh, activating local governance, uh, the judiciary laws for dealing with the real, the central bank. One of the striking factors about, most striking factors about uh, going to Aden um, is you see that this is effectively there are two countries, right? The Aden is not the north. So while before, of course, you would have had all local government officials be from the south, but now it's not only that, it's the security services and the military that has been built anew after the war are all southern. There is a reality that essentially Yemen is splitting, and not only splitting, but the institutions and security institutions are being built on, around, on the ground around these splits. So, of course, this is going to have implications for negotiations. Uh, the idea that it would go back quickly to a unified state is just impractical on the ground. Um, these forces that are um, controlling um, security um, need to be included in any ceasefire arrangement and also any discussion of uh, what happens with the structure of the state. Mm -hmm.